highlight of the action, MSNBC national correspondent and host of AM Joy, Joy Reid, who just landed, made it in front of the camera, <laughs> Matt Schlapp, chairman of the American Conservative Union, and in Washington, the Huffington Post political editor and reporter, Sam Stein, and also, I think, the fifth wheel on Morning Joe, because he's on so much, um, which is not a bad thing. Sam, let's start with no. you here. Donald Trump yesterday painting a dire picture of the economy in 1995, one where people were barely able to make it down the street because buildings were falling down, and that's why he allegedly uh, wrote off nearly a billion dollars in loss. What's reality versus the description he gave yesterday? It's uh, slightly different from the description he gave yesterday. The commercial real estate market was not doing well in the early 90s, so in that sense, he was right. It wasn't a great time to be in commercial real estate, but residential real estate was so much worse during the most recent recession than there. And of course, the economy as a whole, uh, while there was a downturn, was nowhere near what we experienced in 2007, 2008. So uh, for him to complain that uh, his economic troubles were the problem of an uh, economy at large is disingenuous. Uh, it mostly had to do with uh, mismanagement of casinos, over leveraging, buying bad airlines, things like that. Uh, I think he wasn't taking enough personal responsibility there. Matt, let me get your thoughts on that in all serious. You know, listen, we know that this country has seen its struggles, uh, 2008, 2007, the housing crisis, as Sam pointed out in the early 90s, also a very difficult time for this country. But when the every man and every woman, for lack of a better description, was struggling in 2007 and losing their homes, this is what Donald Trump said. I'll remind our audience, which you're very familiar with when he was asked about our housing crisis. There's a lot of talk, which you no doubt heard too, about a so-called real estate bubble. What's your take on that pessimism? Well, first of all, I, I sort of hope that happens because then people like me would go in and buy. You know, if you're in a good cash position, which I'm in a good cash position today, then people like me would go in and buy like crazy. So, Matt, compare the Donald Trump description of, of the climate he faced and, and needing to write out all of this debt to those people and those families who lost their homes in the housing bubble and who could not write off all of their debt and carry on. Yeah, no, it's uh, actually what happened in the mid-90s in the real estate market was some ramifications of our last major tax reform. We really haven't had major tax reform since 1986. Uh, and that had a ramification in Atlantic City and a lot of other big commercial properties. But when it comes to people losing their homes, that was a tragic period. I think the American voter is still worried about their housing value, the stability of their pensions and what they take home. And I think it was a terrible thing. I think it was bad that Goldman Sachs and all these other big banks who are almost all supporting Hillary Clinton had used these devices like credit default swaps and other things. And I think they actually in some ways contributed to the housing market crashing. I don't think Donald Trump had anything to do with that. He was simply saying as an investor, he believes that our houses, our housing value in America is still something worthy to invest in. But the fact that there was this bubble, it was a terrible thing for the American family. It's a terrible thing that these banks contributed to it. Yeah, but Matt, do you think that then when someone like a Donald Trump is able to, if these are correct, basically wash away bad business decisions. He doesn't reinvest in America to make America greater. He doesn't invest in veterans. On the tax returns, it even shows that he didn't check to give the donation that so many of us do at the bottom of the tax returns. And this is just three pages. Well, what I don't about do his that personal, check either. What about his personal responsibility? I think, I think, look, when you're a business person, man or woman, you have good years and you have bad years. This was a calamitous year. And he used the benefits of the tax code, which quite frankly, Tamron, he is saying, he's being honest. I know the system. I think the system's rigged. It has benefited me greatly to the tune of $9 billion in some ways. And we need to change it because the country is hurting. And if we don't change yeah. the way our tax system works, we're going to be in sorry shape. Matt, is omission lying? If you omit details, are you lying? Uh, yeah, that's what I learned in catechism. There okay. are sins of omission and commission. That's what I learned too, Matt. Is he omitting details by not releasing his tax return? No, okay. not at all. No, not at all. Because you have a first. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. You now you would be the first to say that as an American citizen, you have a right to privacy and on your financial matters, you have that right. Which you but don't have a right. But he says he was a, a genius. He's as bragging about. And, and let me tell you, we're pulling this clip from the the the. the a rally where he still calls it his alleged tax return, but he doesn't call it his alleged genius. 
Tamron, I think what the voters need to understand is that in order to run for president, the legal barrier is you have to file with the Federal Election Commission a financial disclosure statement. His statement is hundreds of pages, and he gives a very detailed look into the state of his financial affairs. But it missed the detail of $900 billion loss. That's a detail it missed. Joy, let me bring you in on this. Speaker Ryan says that this doesn't matter. And we've heard solid reporting from Jacob Roscone saying for Trump's true supporters, they do see the storyline that Matt is saying, as well as the Trump campaign, that, listen, he's a smart guy. He got through it. How does this play with some of those Gary Johnson supporters and those few people who are still in the middle that can make the difference here. Yeah, Tamron, I think that the, the conversation you and Matt were just having sort of is emblematic of the point. I mean, the only evidence that we have that Donald Trump, for instance, is a billionaire is his own statement that he's a billionaire. The only evidence being his financial disclosure form, which is his own sort of tale about his finances, whereas the tax returns are more independent look at his tax returns. And he said he, he made $3 million uh, that year in 1995, which was a boom year in the economy. I remember the 95 very well. That was a great time in the country. But I think for Donald Trump supporters, his word is good enough for them. They believe whatever he says. If he says he's worth $40 billion, they believe it, and they will repeat that to you if you go out on the street and talk to them. So I don't think this hurts Donald Trump with his core base supporters. Here's the problem, though. We now have a movable piece of the electorate. You have one part, which is the Gary Johnson vote, which is evaporating before our eyes, which is looking for some place to go, and Donald Trump is not appealing to them. And you have women, particularly white suburban women, who are now movable. They normally go for Republicans. They are trending toward Hillary Clinton. These kinds of stories and things like the Newsweek uh, article about him not buying American products, choosing Chinese over American steel, those kind of things will begin to set in with that small, movable part of the electorate. And let me pick up on that with you, Matt. You have Kurt Eichenwald reporting, and Sam as well. You can talk to us about, here's another report saying that when given the opportunity to bet on America, Donald Trump did not, according to this Newsweek article on steel that could potentially play a role in Ohio, Matt. Well, this gets to the question. If you're yeah. a business person and you're competing in the marketplace, you have to go shop for the lowest prices for the products and uh, for the materials you need. And I think we all do that in our daily lives. And I think what Donald Trump is saying, nobody should get an unfair advantage. And what happens with China, oftentimes they get an unfair advantage with our consumers. And we don't get that same right to sell our products into their market. And that's the point he's making on trade and everything else. I don't think if you run a business, you want to run that business in a way where uh, you're buying the most expensive product. By the same token, why are American businesses taxed so high? We have the highest rates of taxation in the country. Maybe if we had better tax rates, we could compete with our international competitors. But T Tamron, if, if I could just make a quick point, Brooks Brothers manages to make 100% of their suits in the United States. Donald Trump makes his suits in China. Companies make decisions every day right. that bet on the country. Matt, we actually have a popular segment on this show. It's called Born in the USA or Made in the USA, uh, where we have companies, uh, many of them who were started by people who moved to this country from other places that make everything in the U.S., and they have found cost-effective ways to remain loyal to the American worker. So it is done every day. And I believe in that. And I think we ought to have regulations and taxes that make that happen more okay. and more often every day. Sam, let me get you to get the last word on this. Uh, we're going to go back to Joy a little bit later in the hour. But regarding this vice presidential <clears throat> debate tonight, um, is there anything you foresee as a, a moment that would linger and have an impact on what happens Sunday when uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump face off again? No. Um, but as, to, <laughs> as for the previous point, to Matt's previous oh point, I think that Trump would have a, bigger, mm. a better leg to stand on here if his tax policies actually did anything to address mm. the ability of someone of wealth to carry forward their losses over subsequent years and minimize their tax burden. I think he would have a better leg to stand on if he listed in detail how it would be that American manufacturers would take back those jobs from China. Right now we have what are essentially, objectively, mm -hmm. platitudes from him mm -hmm. about what his trade policy would be. I mean, he's talking about tariffs, but beyond that, no one actually knows what, the, what, what he's talking about. Right. And his tax policy doesn't actually do anything to stop people like him in the future from taking advantage of the tax code. So I think you know, that's, that's the disconnect here. All right, Sam, thank you, Matt. Thank you as well. Right. Enjoy. We're going to go to a break and have you back on. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it, guys. And Thanks, we'll Sam. see you on Morning Joe, Sam, <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. All right. I love